I have a question for you. Have you ever had a situation, an event, or something that broke you, that turned you, that you know after going through that, you are never going to be the same person you were again? If you can answer yes to that, then listen in because this podcast is for me and you. Hey, this is Michelle Spiva, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. So join me on the flip as we talk about building that next step after brokenness. I'll see you on the flip. A little while back, I had gone through a sustained time of just turmoil. Um, Everything I attempted to do got shot down and I was beat down to the point where I just felt broken. Um, I was trying to do it all and have it all. And I, I felt... I felt betrayed. I felt so many different things that it's just crazy. And it was it was really a dark time uh, in my life. And I got my hands on this book called Reality is Broken by Dr. Jane McGonigal. And I read the book and it helped me so much. And I liked the book because of the title. I was unfamiliar with her world because she was a gamer. Uh, but not only that, she was a gamer researcher. And so she is, I shouldn't say was. Um, and Dr. Jane talked about uh, games that she put together that are real life role playing games that could be played um, in the public. And, and uh, she talked about some of the things that people were getting wrong at the time about the culture of gaming. And the more she talked about her research and her findings and even uh, a personal uh, story of how she had been ill for a while, and because she made an online game to be able to con- to connect with people, it helped her with her healing process. I'll be forever grateful to this particular book, which is called Reality Is Broken, and I check the show notes, and I'll make sure I put the link in there. I'll be forever grateful to Dr. Jane for helping me to know how to build the next step after brokenness. And so that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Some of the wisdom smacks that I got from it. Um, And please forgive me if it might, you know, if I, you know, might sound a little emotional, but when I go back to this, because it was that beacon in the dark for me, and who would think a book about a researcher's findings on what she learned about how games help people to cope would have that kind of impact? I'm just going to say it did. And I I love this book. (laughs) So, um, yeah. So anyway, um, if you'll notice, I said building the next step after brokenness. And the reason why I said building instead of taking um, is because in this particular regard, looking at what it means to be broken for me, uh, and my personal experience, because I'm just going to, I'm going to go through personal. And yes, I have worked with many people who have been broken, who are like, I am never going to be the same. I have been um, able to assist many people who have gone through traumatic experiences and I have myself. And, but today I want to just kind of, kind of come from this personal standpoint. And that is when you are changed forever, by an incident that has happened or incidents compounding one after another, there are certain things that um, linger that you may not be aware of. And I, (laughs) and like I said before, I I know I'm like pausing because it just still, I, I really have this, this, this need to convey that, these things are real. You don't have to be ashamed of them. You can be vulnerable enough to talk about them. And there can be things that can be learned that will help us. And so because of that, I want to, like I said, I want to talk about this. Okay. So let me talk about um, how I started rebuilding and, and with some smacks that I got and things that you can do as well. Well, the first thing is 
because I was working within this, this confounds of this book and starting to learn about gaming, um, I, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't familiar with gaming. I, I wasn't a player. I'm still not really a player of games in, in that regard. The multi, um, multi, uh, mass multiplayer games and those types of things. But I was really surprised to learn some of the attributes and the benefits that people were getting from these games. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the stuff that I learned um, that help to build and help to strengthen us when we're in we're in down times. And one of the concepts that really rang true with me, and she doesn't go into this a lot, but because of what she talked about with regards to camaraderie and stuff, it, it drove me into learning more about the psychology around gaming. Now, I'm not talking about gaming theory of, you know, gaming mechanics and, and the rules of gaming as much as I'm talking about the social aspect of it. And that is um, the power of dungeons. <laughs> yes, the power of dungeons. And when you have been broken, a lot of times you feel like you're in this punishment land. You're cut off from the rest of the world or, or you might not have the resources or the bandwidth to be able to do what the situation calls for. It might seem like it's overwhelming, insurmountable, the odds that you have to go against. And when I started looking at the reason why people put themselves into these types of predicaments for fun, You know, they're actually putting in hours of work in these games for this kind of stuff. And I learned the medicinal effects that could happen. It was just an amazing thing. So I want to quickly talk about the concept of the dungeon. Okay. Now, the one thing about the dungeon, if you have ever played these games, you already know this. And if you haven't, and you're like a neophyte like me, you know, I'm going to try to explain it from those terms. So, you know, if you are a gamer, just bear with me, y'all. Just bear with me, okay? And so, one of the things about being in a dungeon, a lot of times, dungeons contain what are called dungeon bosses, And these bosses or boss levels are these creatures that are just insanely powerful. And to go into a dungeon by yourself to try to fight is asking for death and to have to be able to respawn. You know, it's kind of like a reset when you when you die in the game, you respawn, you come back to life, you know, at a starting point, you got to start all over again. And when I looked at the dungeon and this this whole thing about them and why they're set up the way they're set up and even listening to how Dr. Uh, reading and listening how to Dr. Jane McConnell uh, talks about the camaraderie and um, the the work of grinding and even her treatise on the uh, the game classic War of Warcraft uh, World of Warcraft it was just an eye opening thing because. When you're looking at brokenness, brokenness means that that some some things are not only fractured, they are torn asunder, torn apart. And one of the things that I believe is paramount to being able to move on after a debilitating or traumatizing event is to be able to rebuild your links and your steps and your um your connections to the world and the and when i say to the world socially to be able to either upgrade your friends or whatever or to find um strength in those that you can have a common bond with and when i was looking at these dungeons and stuff um and why would people do all of this toil and build up these levels and these skills in these games to try to go and fight a dungeon boss for some loot i was like there has to be more to it than than this and as the book you know talked about i actually joined some of these um Facebook groups uh, with with the different ones and uh, started to learn that the camaraderie was healing for a lot of people. You know, there are people that feel disenfranchised in their jobs. You know, what do you do with a person um, who has to give up their old life 
to settle into a new one where they are discombobulated and nobody really cares, you know, but they can slough all that off when they can come home at night, put on a set a headgear and work with people across the world who are all there for the same goal. And that is to work together to achieve something. Now, yeah, it, it might be a digital boss in a game, but through fighting together and and suffering um, the pains and having to have each other's backs, you feel like you're able to abolish the loneliness and you're, you feel like you're able to do things. And Dr. Jane really talks about the concept of camaraderie in a brilliant way because she makes note of this, that in any other area of our life, we would look at these people as competitors and that there is a difference in that when you have a person who is right alongside you trying to fight this boss or whatever, and they're trying to get their points and stuff, it takes on not a competitive nature as much as it takes on a camaraderie where, yes, we are we, we, we both have goals and things that we're trying to achieve, but we understand that doing it together is going to benefit us way more than trying to do it alone or against each other. And so though they have these common goals um, where they work towards something, um, guilds, I mean, when I was first learning about this stuff and uh, learning that you could sign up to a guild, you know, I was like, at first I was like, is this an in-game gang? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like for some of them, probably yes. But these people, um, she talked about how a lot of times these people would know each other for years, never having even seen them except for an avatar in a game to be able to come to conventions from around the world to meet up in real life, IRL, um, and have fast friends because they have been closer to you than even some of your family. That was very powerful. And so let me just talk a little bit more about this, this whole idea of the, of the gaming part and, and that part. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about, you know, the, the continuing to build this bridge back to a place where you can stand and you can live a fulfilling life. Okay. Okay. So with the dungeon concept in the gaming world, um, there is a certain fatigue that comes and, it's the same kind of medicinal property that happens when people go to horror films and get great enjoyment out of the thrill of being scared. And it is because when you can get, you, you have a tether to control something, no matter how hard it gets, it helps us to work on the things that we can't control. So think about it. Um, at the time <laughs> when I was going through this, nothing was going right in my life. When I say nothing, nothing was going right. And I um, did not have time to have a woe is me. I had to keep pushing forward, keep trying to figure it out because it was kind of like, you know, I'm not going to let this get me down. But it had a toll on me. And I found that I had... Uh, many scars and, and bruises and, and, and wounds that I didn't realize I had come out of this time with. And so there was a brokenness. There was a, a self-pity. Yeah, there was a lot of that going on. And the way I uh, had to rebound from that was to start to find uh, ways to reach out to people. And this was when I started understanding that there were certain things that I could have in friendships from around the world. And to this day, I'm so grateful. And, you know, because I'm even talking to you by using these technologies of the internet and we're talking just one-on-one, -on -one, I'm very grateful for it because I'm going to tell you, it is sometimes hard and harsh when the community that you have in real life, when, when you don't have that community anymore, you know, maybe you lose a job and your entire life, all your friends were at this job and the, the job is no more. Your life changes. Or what about when you go through a devastating 
breakup or a divorce or a splitting up of your family. And, you know, the social side of it, you know, the friends, the friends that you used to hang out with, you know, they get divvied up in the breakup or the divorce and your life or, or even, even if you're, uh, used to having a certain amount of, uh, control, uh, reputation, and that gets besmirched or you lose that. There's so much that can rock us to our core and our foundations. And I found that I didn't, I I didn't realize how much I had retreated and that I had to work my way back. And because I got my hand on this book, I started looking for these communities that I could go into, uh, wounded as I was and, and, and learn from them to be able to work my way back, you know? And so um, one of the things that I, I found that really worked was to have these comrades, you know, for social support. And the good thing about uh, having comrades, having people that are trying to do the same thing, support groups and those types of things, because that's what I went to. I, I didn't play games. I, I just want to make that that known. Even though I read the book, I found people of common interest with me um, online in support groups. And um we did our we did our grind, if you will, uh, by checking in daily when we knew we had to keep going, keep doing, although all hell seemed to be breaking loose. And and those are are times that really uh, boded me well by just people, you know, you know, sending an emoji with you know digital hugs, you know, that your day goes well, that you get your day goes better. And then after that, uh, so I'm I want to stress that. Don't try to go it alone. I think I'm, that's that's really kind of what I'm saying here is don't try to go it alone. Get support groups. Reach out to people who are in uh, similar situations and uh, take advantage of the power of the group because it really it really does work. And when you're in that dungeon of your life, understand that you're not there alone. It might seem like you're there alone, but the bosses, the the things in that dungeon out to get you, they are big and they can kill you. They can break you down. So reach out to other people and make sure that you let them know, I'm not okay. This is not a good day, <laughs> you know? Um, but do it in a way and do it with people that you have spent enough time with to know that they're not going to, you know, come at you and do more damage for you having to take, you know, having taken this, the stance to be uh, vulnerable to them, you know, because that matters too, you know? So I want to also say that in this whole dungeon scenario thing of the games, one of the things that I learned, you know, when I was like, why would people put themselves through that when they've got these lives they're trying to lead on the uh, real life? Why would they come home and spend all these hours only to, you know, know they could possibly digitally die in these games and they have to do all this grunt work just to get skills or special gear or whatever it is to fight the monster. And, uh, <laughs> What I found was, is that once you join these guilds and you go through these raids and, you know, you raid the bosses and stuff, they drop these things called loot bags and and everybody in the party or in the guild gets to share in the loot. They get to share. And that was something that became very powerful to me. And that is that when you are willing to share your life, you're also willing to share the the breakthroughs and the joys of the group. And I I have just I, I've talked about this in other podcasts recently about loneliness, lack and loss and how it's uh, become prevalent. And I believe that is why um wisdom is calling for people to realize that you don't have to do this alone and that just because you might not be around people physically as much as you would like to be, there's still ways to do this. You can do it online. You can reach out. You can tell people about it. But that is one of the fastest ways to build the next step after you're broken. Reach out, get comrades and and, um, social support. So the next one is vulnerability. Now, this is one that came into vogue 
maybe about 10 years ago uh, with Dr. Brene Brown out of Texas talking about her research on shame that led to her understanding of vulnerability. And that vulnerability is really a true strength. Let me tell you guys something about um a concept that I use when I'm I'm making up characters in my alternate e- uh, my alter ego personality of uh, Michael Daniels, my my writing persona, and that is I use this concept called H A R V V, and it stands for humor, action, romance, violence, and vulnerability. And those are consider those five levers that I that I use in my storytelling to make things realistic and to have it where people can see um, the realism in the fiction. And one of the biggest levers are I I. I don't want to say biggest levers, but one of the biggest factors that impacts everything is the amount of vulnerability you infuse into your characters because vulnerability is not about sniveling and woe is me and pity me and victimhood. No, vulnerability uh, is a sign of strength. And that's the same for what we do in the in real life. And I, for one, had been a person who was would try to hide, you know, hide behind the smile, hide behind the everything is fine. And uh, for my therapy people out there, you're probably laughing because you know what fine stands for. And I can't say it on 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 this podcast because this is a family podcast. <laughs> but being able to practice your vulnerability muscle. Uh, it makes it puts you out there, boy. Really puts you out there, and um, doing it in a way where you know there's some skin in the game for you to have vulnerability. But it's kind of like a thumbing in the nose, uh, thumbing in the face of the 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 demons, the ghosts, and the haunts that would try to keep you sequestered and under their feet with the brokenness. The next one is self pity, as I said before. Self-pity is an insidious thing. Um, You'll be in self-pity and not even realize it. And self-pity has you debased. It has you bent over and broke down. I was looking, I talked about Bugs Bunny the other day, and I was looking at some, the evolution of how they drew him uh, from his inception up to now. And if you, if you go and you actually look at the the drawings, what you'll find is when they first started, he was bent over. Um, and then he evolved. Um, you could actually see his back rising. And one of the the, the things that stood out to me is that w- in relation to his growth, the straighter his back, the more he was in control and in charge. And self-pity is this energy that bends you over so that people can walk over you and that you don't get, and I don't like to use the word fair or, you know, or anything like that, but it causes you not to have your just take on the world, you know? So look at your posture emotionally and physically and root out any self-pity that lingers and get over that as fast as you possibly can. Then the next one is when a door closes, Heck, make a new one. When you are denied access to the highway to get to where you want to go in life, make your own lane. That's the big thing that I I learned from being in some of these groups of women who played these games <laughs> is that, you know, you don't want me on your guild. That's fine. We'll go over here and we'll create our own and we'll we'll create our own way to uh, raid and do whatever we want you know, whatever we want. Oh, you don't like me for whatever reason. That's crazy. Okay. I'll make my own door. I'll make my own lane. And that just even having that, it's kind of like an energy, like a, I'll show you energy that shows up that helps you to get past, oh, you know, the hurt, the trauma that has happened. And it's just, like I said, it's just a amazing thing when you are able to do what you need to. Now, it's not going to be easy because you're going to be starting from scratch with basically no support. But you do it and you look around and after a while, you will get to your goal, your finish line or the next level or whatever it is you're trying to get to. 
And with that, this is the this is something that at first when I heard it, I was like, oh, that's a that's a bit ego driven, a bit cocky, but it works. And that is to instead of being a trailblazer, just bust the trail up, be a trail buster, you know, be a barrier breaker, <laughs> those types of things with that kind of energy to move into a different headspace, a different emotion, a different way of life and a, a different take on your energy of how you go about stuff and just, you know, make it your own. And then, um, I heard this in a, no, I read this somewhere in a, a book, um, a fiction book. I, I don't remember the, the one you guys, I'm, I'm sorry. It just, it just stuck with me. And, um, it, it said this, that any power is only limited by one's creativity. And it impacted me so much that I wrote it down, you know, and I wanted to, uh, go back and say that when I looked back at it, I think that wisdom was saying to any power that you have, go for it. Use your creativity. Because when you use your creativity and you add, you add in boldness, oh my gosh, you will get so much, so much. And then the last thing I want to talk about real quick is something that, um, is prevalent and people don't realize it. And it's what we call learned helplessness. Let me tell you a quick story about learned helplessness. If you look at how trainers break in wild animals, jungle animals even, uh, they do it by instilling this learned helplessness. So there is uh, this account of how trainers would take baby elephants to break them in for the circus. And I don't, I, this is very, you know, horrible, but I'm just going to tell you. And what they would do is they would take, and I said baby elephants, but it could be any any elephant. And they would take um a chain and put it around one of their legs uh, on a post. And whenever the elephant would try to wander off too far outside of the length of that chain, it would yank on their foot and they wouldn't be able to, to move. And so after a while, whenever the, uh, whenever the animal, whether, you know, it be the elephant or whatever, would try to leave outside of the confines of the circumference of that chain, they couldn't. And once the, um, trainer saw that uh, it was effective, they could take the chain off of the elephant and the elephant would not go outside of the circumference of that chain because the chain became an invisible chain. And what I'm saying is, is when you have brokenness, brokenness doesn't just happen really with one thing. Brokenness happens when you have had a succession of failures, when you have had a succession of of your world crashing down, you're not crazy. It it really did happen. And so this learned helplessness says, why even bother? You're just going to get knocked back down because that's all the evidence you've had. You know, uh, I've had people that have told me, you know, I'm the first one, I mean, last one hired, first one fired of no, you know, whatever of my own, I'm, I'm what's wrong with me. And, you know, I've, I've had to sit there and just be able to hold a space with them because I understand what they're saying. Because sometimes you don't know why, you know, a lot of people who have had a good run of it are quick to say, well, you didn't want it enough, you know, or this or that. And I am saying that that may or may not be the case. We can't categorically say that. But there are times when nothing goes right for a very long time. And I want to just say right now, be aware. Be aware if you have invisible chains still around your ankle, keeping you from moving forward. Look for them, search them out and release yourself from them. Remember, Dr. Jane says reality is broken and it is up to us to go through and find new ways to strengthen ourselves to create the realities we want. Um, yesterday, I talked about how to reshape your reality. And I'm, I've been on this, you know, because I really believe that there are, there are some people under the sound of my voice that need to know that you are not sentenced to the life that is spread in front of you, that you have the power to change it and that your brokenness 
is not an indictment. It is not a life sentence. It is just a temporary pit stop. It is not settled. And so I want you to understand that you can have help. Look for comrades who are out there slugging along day by day with you. Be vulnerable um, to show your true strength. Make sure that you don't let self-pity keep you down and hold you under the water to drown the life out of you. Um, Create new doors and make sure that you understand that you can walk through those doors. Create your own lane if the highway doesn't allow you on it. You can still get to your destiny. Become a trail buster and a barrier breaker. And any power you have, employ your creativity. Use your power in creative ways to do what you need to. And if you have any learned helplessness, root it out, destroy it, and tear it up. And you'll you'll be able to have the next step after brokenness. You'll be able to get back on the saddle and keep going. So guess what? Yep, my time is up. I sure do thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spiva, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with another podcast of Wisdom Smack. And thank you so much for your support. Check out the show links and I'm going to see you tomorrow. Use our Amazon link at michellespiva.com forward slash AMC. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.